Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we are going to be talking about the photoelectric effect, which is always a fun topic because there are some scientists that you know who worked on this. And it's also fun because normally you learn this at the end of the year and we're getting pretty close to the end of the year, aren't we? I hope. So this right here, it's a sheet of metal. It can be whatever metal you'd like, copper, tungsten, gold. You can choose the metal, I don't care. But as you know, with metals, there's all these electrons on it all over the place, swimming with electrons, kind of like an electron soup. And what I'm going to do to disturb the electrons, I am going to shine a series of photons on this metal. Now, what are photons? That's something that I didn't learn until I got to college, and I feel like I should have learned it sooner because it's really a simple definition. Photons are just light. So when we say we shoot photons at something, it just means we shine a light on it. So what I'm doing is I'm shining photons on this metal, and what that will cause the electrons to do is that some of them will jump ship and fly off of the metal going with some kinetic energy K. So the man who discovered this phenomenon, his name is Heinrich Hertz. You may have heard of him because we use his name in the units for frequency, the Hertz. Now what's interesting is that with the photoelectric effect, if I had two identical sheets of metal, like this, and again, they both have electrons all over the place, there are some metals where I can shine, for instance, a red light on it, and I'm saying a red light because red light is known to have low energy, and we can explain that with the equations that I'm gonna be writing down later. And what we notice is that for some metals, no electrons are ejected. Ejected meaning they fly off of the metal. But then when you take the exact same plate of metal and you shine blue light on it, and blue light is known for having much higher energy than red light, then now all of a sudden the electrons start flying out and they do get ejected. Now Heinrich Hertz was kind of a dummy. He was never able to figure out why this was the case. But then a young scientist named Albert Einstein, who you also may have heard of, finally discovered that the reason why some photons, some colors of light, are able to eject and others cannot is because there is an equation that describes this photoelectric effect phenomenon. And that is the equation K equals E minus W, where let me explain all these variables. K is the kinetic energy, the one-half mv squared. And yes, one-half mv squared will still work for things as small as an electron. E is the energy of the photon, so the energy of the light, which we remember we have an equation for. The energy in a photon is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times F, which is the frequency. H, of course, being 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34th. And F, the frequency, even has its own equation, since C equals lambda times F for any electromagnetic wave. And remember, gang, electromagnetic waves mean light. Then I can solve for F and say F is equal to C, which is the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th, divided by the wavelength, whatever that happens to be, for the light. And by the way, the reason why blue light has more energy is because it has a higher frequency. Blue light has a higher frequency, which means it has more energy. And then the last variable in this equation is W. This is known as the work function. I don't know why it's called the work function, but basically this is the minimum energy needed to eject an electron. So if I tell you the work function is seven, just making up a number, and you don't have seven units of energy, no electrons ejected. And that's the problem with red light. We weren't exceeding the work function. And what's perhaps even more interesting is if I take this exact same scenario, okay, and I shine a lot of red light, like all over the place, red light everywhere, flood the metal with red light, nothing changes, no electrons ejected, it's just a more red metal. And that's a joke, that doesn't actually matter. Now if you do the same thing with the blue light where electrons were getting ejected, and I flood this thing with blue lights from the heavens, and there's so much blue light everywhere, well this actually does make a difference now. Now, way more electrons are going to be ejected all over the place. 
And so that's basically it for the photoelectric effect in terms of everything you need to know, in terms of the equations, in terms of the concept. And again, who do we have to thank for this? Two people, Heinrich Hertz and Albert Einstein, which we all know who Einstein is. And what's funny is we all consider Albert Einstein to be, you know, probably the greatest physicist of all time. In my opinion, it's still Tesla. But the funny thing is the photoelectric effect is the only discovery that Albert Einstein made that won him a Nobel Prize for science. So we all think of Albert Einstein as this genius of a man, but really he only won one Nobel Prize, which is technically only one more than I've won. So is he really that smart? So that's gonna do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at some practice problems involving the photoelectric effect. So I'll see you there. Take care and bye-bye.